Well, at least you can see some of the water in, in the Sabi Sands. Our chair at the moment. Oh, oh excitement. Um, the water, the grass is too long. We can just see tails. But please don't fly. Please don't fly. Get your bird list ready. By the way, my name is Brett Yo Smith. We're on a live African safari in the Maasai Mara. I have uh, the talented Zander on. No, come back, grey backed fiscal. Oh, there's two of them. Is that okay here, Zander? Oh, and some babblers by the looks of things. And we got the on the far right. Yeah. There we go. That's a really cool bird. It's a grey backed fiscal shrike. And that's another one from our list. Let me just get my binoculars out because it looks like there's a few other birds in the tree. Now we've uh, we haven't seen much yet this afternoon, but we've we've gone into an area that we haven't been before, and the grass is very long. And uh, there's a couple of prides of lions around there. One that's called the the uh, sausage tree pride. But I think with the long grass and this, they're actually up in the tree. We're not going to get any luck. But we are heading towards the report of the Serena pride of lions on a giraffe kill. So we're going to try head down towards there. And then this is very exciting. So literally this is the first time I've ever been here. You're experiencing this live for the first time with me. Hashtag Safari Live uh, if you want to ask us any questions. Remember on Twitter, hashtag Safari Live. It is absolutely exquisite out here. Oh, here comes the puffback. He's land, landed, landed right next to us. Look, 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 look. Now, Ali's wondering, are there dwarf mongoose in Kenya? Uh, we do get dwarf mongoose here. They're slightly different coloration. They're, they're sort of orangey, but rusty. There we go. Thanks very much, Doug. Now, rusty are colored. We also uh, have been seeing a lot of banded mongoose, so I will be keeping my eye out for both of those. But with the grass at the length it is at the moment, it can make spotting those difficult. How cool is this? Now, this is a new bird tick for all of us, the grey-backed fiscal. I'm hunting around. Now, the fiscal shrikes are, are quite famous. and uh, Their old, really old name, what my grandfather used to call them, was a Jackie Hangman. Now, of course, Jackie Hangman was the, the man who used to pull the, the rope and send people to their death. Now, when they catch insects, uh, they like to store them on thorns, and, uh, and they keep a little larder like that. So it sometimes it can be quite macabre. And uh, that tree it flew out of is a Balanites, but a different Balanites to the one we're used to. And the, it's Balanites Egypt, Egypt, Egyptica. There we go. Thanks, Douglas. Egyptica. So uh, the one we have is Morgami in 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 southern Africa. Now this is a very very important area. So the the Mara has these Balanite zones that are a little bit higher, uh, and they don't get as flooded during the rains. But we're going to keep moving towards the hopefully a pride of lions that are munching upon uh, a, a poor giraffe. Uh, not so good for the giraffe, but good for the lions. But James has got something on his dam. Hello, hello. Okay. Well, you can just see. Let me just stop for a second. There we go. The Mara River up ahead. So we're heading down towards the river to the main crossing areas where the wildebeest cross. And this is where James and, and Graham were filming last year uh, when they got some incredible sequences. Now also there's a hyena den somewhere around here. We're not sure exactly where yet, so that's the fun part. We're searching. And this is also the area where I did see some Thompson's gazelle. And also, I'm sure a lot of you are excited. Although he hasn't been seen in a while, this is Scar's territory. So below this ridge here, all the way down to the river, prime territory. But uh, we are, from chatting to the other guides and that, it doesn't look like he's been seen in, in, a, in, a, in a month or maybe even a bit longer. And it's difficult. We never know with male lions, and especially older male lions, they disappear. Sometimes they just appear again. Oh, we've got some giraffe. And some gazelles down at the bottom there, so let's get a bit closer. Hopefully, there's a, a Grant's gazelle there. Now, James is wondering, are our chances of seeing Artfark higher in the Mara than in Juma? I would say yes, James. 
uh, specifically when we, we get all our vehicles set up for the, the nocturnal stuff we're going to have a very good chance spending many hours out at night and there are lots of termite mounds and there, there are quite a lot of art fark in this area so i think we've got a very good chance uh, also things like art wolf caracal serval uh, lots of the little nocturnal creatures we're going to have a very good chance of seeing once our, our, our nighttime kit is all sorted and set up. Ooh, there's lots of animals there. And there's a, a big herd. I can't see exactly what's in, but there's a, quite a lot of, I'm guessing, gazelles, impala, maybe a topi or three. There's some triple skirchies coming up, the, the giraffe. And some, definitely some tommies. Oof, that's a lovely big herd. So exciting. Oh, wow. And there must be close to over a hundred animals in that little clearing down there. Now this is the exact spot where I saw the Grant's gazelles a few days ago. Maybe the Grant's gazelle are in that big herd. So, but... Okay, well, we've got a bit of a traffic jam here. And we've got some triple skirchies in the road. Uh, I know James was hoping for Grant's Gazelle. Me too, James. And, got, and um, triple skirchies, of course, are the Maasai giraffe. And it looks like two boys. Now, Norm is wondering if you can off-road here. Norm, you can. So, uh, the general rule is you don't off-road down towards the river, but you can off-road away from the river. So you must remember that there are lots of vehicles here, especially during the high season. So too many vehicles off-roading on sensitive soil is not a good thing. Uh, so no one off-roads to the right, but to the left we can off-road. Well, thank you for moving on, Triple Skirchies. Magnificent creatures. I do love the patterns. Whoop! They're going to head off, and I think let's try to get a bit closer to that really big herd. And I think there were some more giraffe with them. And I think we're going to see some big crocodiles as well. They're going to make Boris look like, uh, like, a, like a puddle frog. Okay, now, where are you Grant's gazelles? Are you hiding amongst the Tommies and Impalas? Okay, here we go. Let's look carefully. Let's go, here we go. Tell me when to stop when it's good for you, eggs. Good? Alas! I don't see any Grant's Gazelle. I only see Impala and Tommies. Now, I know we spoke about the Thompson's Gazelle on the Sunrise Safari and uh, where it got its name. A few of you might have missed it. So it's, it's from an explorer called Joseph Thompson. Uh, he was Scottish, he was a Scottish geologist, and he was quite unique in the fact that he was one of the few explorers of the sort of Victorian era that did not have troubles with his porters and the local people. And he had the most incredible motto, uh, those who, he who travels gently travels safely, he who travels safely travels far, which is just awesome. Okay, we can hear some hippos. I'm just going to ask Doug, where do you think is the best place to see crocodiles? This one or the next one? The next one. Okay, so we're going to keep moving towards that, one of the crossing points where we're going to hopefully see some big crocs and I'm hoping there's going to be a Grant's Gazelle on the way. Now, in these big open plains, your binoculars are very important, but also one of the best animals to keep an eye on is giraffe because they can spot things, spot things in the long grasses. Now, Tony says, hopefully uh, we'll find some cheetah. Uh, I definitely am going to go into the area where the, the cheetah are more common uh, at some point in the next little while.
But um, at the moment, the cheetah stay away from this area because of the high density of lions. They're further to the south uh, on the boundary of Kenya and Tanzania. So we, we, will, we will be going down there when we do get a chance. But uh, at the moment, we're just really focusing on trying to figure out this area. And I mean, it is just so big. Uh, it's, it's so exciting. I don't know where I'm going to go next. But I don't, we haven't actually had a good proper look at the river. So we're going to get down to the river. But just before we do that, there's some lapwings. Which lapwings are these? I'm not sure which lapwings these are. Lapwings, lapwings, lapwings. What do you think they are, eggs? Lapwings. They're lapwings. Yeah. Is that all you've got to offer? Yeah. So, of course, there's quite a lot of crossing over of species, so you just got to be sure. Um, now, there is a very cool lapwing that I am excited to show you. Yes, I was just making sure that it is who I thought it was, and just in case I got caught out. It is a crown lapwing. <laughs> uh, I thought there might be a different species. Okay, so we're going to head down towards the river now, and uh, while we do that, let's go across to Commander Bond and an arachnid. Well, here we are. We've made it to the edge of the Mara River. And there we go, you can see oh, how many, one, two, three, four large crocodiles, and I'm not looking anywhere else, just on that sort of one bank. Now, the biggest of them, who's a true giant, is the one sort of who's half out of the water. Have you got him, eggs? On the right. That's the big, 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 big boy. And they really don't feed much apart from their, their feast. When the wildebeest cross. Oh, look, look, look. Look at that. Oh, sorry, eggs. There's a hippo rolling in the rapids above. He's going completely upside down and doing a roly roly poly. He stopped now, of course, because I spotted him. <laughs> so, yeah, we're right on the edge of the Mara River. And this is one of the main crossing points. Now, eggs towards the left, you see, you can see where the wildebeest will be running down. And this is the main area they're going to cross. And of course, these crocodiles are, are quite territorial over these good spots, and they'll be waiting. Ooh. Mm. Oh, 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 love that sound. So you can see this area of the river, it doesn't have that big, thick forest like further to the north. And that's one of the reasons why the wildebeest cross here. Now, I think this is actually... No, it's the next crossing where James got the, the lion kill. Mm. Oh, 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 oh. oh, isn't this just spectacular? So the water, the river is actually quite low for this time of the year. And uh, it has risen a bit since we've actually been here. But I'm sure the crocodiles won't mind. There's some hippos right in front of us here, in front of the crocodiles. I don't think there's enough money you could pay me to try swim the Mara River. <laughs> it's not worth it. There are a lot of hippos and a lot of crocodiles. Now, Cedar Point is wondering how deep is the water. Well, I'm not going to go test, that's for sure. But I'm probably guessing at the deepest in the deep pools, it's probably three or four meters. But on average, probably uh, around two meters in, 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 in the middle. Uh, maybe a bit shallower. Uh, and, I, and it'll change throughout the year as, as the water level changes with the rains. Oh, there's someone doing some fishing. And then you get in there. Here we go. You get him. The yellow-billed stork for the birders, for the bird list. Doing some fishing in the Mara River. I'd say there's probably tilapia, uh, catfish, barbs, catlets uh, are the fish species that are, you're going to find in the Mara River. And it's 
always quite dirty. It doesn't really get clean. Never gets clean. There we go. So it's always quite dirty. So lots of silt uh, and whatnot from the, the, the runoff. But that, that's very common with a, a young river system like this where the banks are comp always folding in on themselves. Now, I've got another surprise just up the drag that I spotted on my way down to the river. And I think there are going to be a few happy campers. Okay. Ooh, I wonder what it is. I wonder what it is. Let's go find out. Suspense. Eggsy knows what it is. Doug knows what it is. Brent knows what it is. Hi, a Shelly. Uh, Shelly's wondering, are the best sightings from a hot air balloon? Well, Shelly, uh, you, you, we had some incredible sightings from the hot air balloon, but I would say from a, a pure safari and actual watching the animals in interaction, it is still from a vehicle, that, and, and that's nothing to take away from the, the balloon experience, which is <laughs> breathtaking. Uh, but the thing is, with the prevailing winds, uh, the balloon can't really hover in one spot for too long. And so you, you quite often, like when we saw the lions hunting from the balloon, we just sort of, woo, over the top of them. Uh, and then we were quite far. Now, don't tell me they've done a disappearing act. No, they couldn't have. No, it's right here. And they were right, right here. I'm sure we'll find them again now. Eggsy says, why is that Impala so white? Is when we drove past a little bit earlier. And of course it was not a white Impala at all. Where have they gone? Okay, they must be here in the long grass. We'll find them now. Who can spot the white Impala? Oh, where are we looking? Oh, they're just over there. Okay, I've got them now. Thanks, Doug. Thanks, Eggs. So, we are 30 seconds away. This is just the most magnificent ecosystem to be able to... It's, it's just an incredible privilege to be able to, to take you guys on a safari here. It is, it is mind-bogglingly beautiful and, and amazing. There we go. Come here, White Impala. Let's just get on the right side of the light. so cool see the eggs there we go now we can actually compare uh, the the two gazelle species good here we go there is the grants and that's what he thinks of us and grants gazelle and uh, Tommy's around him as well now we haven't ever seen sort of big groups of grants. They seem to be in smaller little herds. Uh, James says he's very happy to see the grants gazelle. Yeah, and that looks like a, is that a female or male? It's a male. Now, you, I've seen grants with absolutely massive, oh, there's a female further on, massive horns. And he doesn't have the biggest set of horns. But you can see much paler uh, than, than, than the Tommies. And there are quite a lot of Tommies. There's a very productive area around here. For, for lots of different things. But there's uh, all, oh, there's, oh, what are the Tommies running from at the bottom? I think they just got a fright. Oh, hang on. No, that's just some grass. And there's a, an elephant bull. And you got him there, eggs. And does it look like, he, there we go. Now he's actually on the other side of the river from us at the moment. Oh, those grants are pretty. Oh, well, from a big, great grey beast across the Mara River. <laughs> okay, we've got a hyena. There's a very sick buffalo calf just up ahead. 
it, and that, oh, the hyenas just spotted it. This could get really interesting. So I'm warning you guys who are sensitive, this could be, oh, there's another hyena coming in. They've, they've seen this, how sickly the buffalo calf is. They're charging in towards it now. Oh my goodness, look at this. There we go. It's onto the buffalo calf. Another hyena's running in. Please be, be warned. This is going to be... Oh, there's hyenas coming in from everywhere. Now, there's a buffalo bull. I need to keep up, sorry. That might come and help the calf. There's a big buffalo bull on his way in. But uh, the calf is really sick. We just saw it. There's one, two, three, four, five hyenas charging in. There's a big buffalo bull charging straight at the hyenas. Trying to protect the, the calf. But the poles in the way sorry 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 look at this isn't this absolutely amazing forward now literally that first boo sent in i mean that now we've got four hyenas i can still see some more coming from the distance So we just we just saw this buffalo calf on the road and I just said, oh, it looks really sick. Then we spotted a hyena and the hyena was walking towards it. It hadn't noticed the, the, the buffalo yet. But as soon as it did, it charged in. Look at the bull chasing those hyenas. Now, oh, guys, this is it, very, very, very disturbing to watch, I know. So if you are sensitive, please switch off. Now the whole herd's coming. The whole herd of buffalo are charging in. There's about 50 buffalo. It's the same herd of buffalo we're with on the Sunrise Safari. They're coming in in defense now. Isn't it, oh, this is insane. But look at how confident the hyenas are, even with the buffalo bull here. Now, it's going to be very different, I think, when, oh, there's more hyenas coming. I can just see hyenas coming from the distance all over the place. Look, here comes a cow. She's coming in really seriously at the hyenas. Now, there's a gap, there's a gap. There's a gap, there's two buffalo away, there's hyenas coming in for the calf. Now that calf is sick, it, it really looked sick when we saw it. But look at this, tails up, the herd of buffalo charging in in defense. Forward, yes, sure. Turn. How's that? No, no. Straight. Now, as I said, that, that calf is very sick. So even though the buffalo managed to chase the hyenas off now, I don't think this calf is going to survive the night. There are more hyenas still coming in. And it, I don't know how long the buffalo will stay with it. Oh, I'm just making sure I haven't pulled out my earpiece or anything because I got so excited. Now, again, remember this is nature and sometimes it is brutal and we're here to absor ob observe it in, in, its, in its, its nicest, its purest birds, but also in, in that really harsh sort of life and death scenario. And uh, this is why it's better than a soap opera. This is real life. This is happening live this very second on the open plains of the Maasai Mara in Kenya. And, and we're just incredibly privileged to be able to show you uh, nature in all its facets. the standoff there are still more hyenas coming in they're not charging in at the same speed now the rest of the herd is also slowly moving back uh, towards us so a lot of people wow 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 and this is one of the reasons we've 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 this, we've based a camp or going to be basing a camp in the Masai Mara this these interactions happen all the time and it is just possibly one of the most spectacular wildlife destinations in the world you, you can't really compare it to anywhere else the amount of interaction you see between predator and prey and remember this is even without the wildebeest migration being here it is just truly one of the greatest spectacles on earth now, as i said that, that that buffalo calf is very sick and and the herd had, had actually left it behind but as soon as that first bellow went out, boo, the rest, the bull who was right at the back of the herd came running in. Now the whole herd is coming back here. Are you on the hyena's greeting? There we go. There's some hyena greeting going on. So 
So, you can see there's a cow wandering off. Now, hyenas, one of their, their, the things that makes them such a successful predator is their patience. Now, this calf, I'm almost certain, won't make it through the night. But while the herds here, the hyenas stand very little chance of actually being able to, uh, to, to get at it. But the herd will move. Um, well, they might stay here for the night. They might protect it for one more night. But I don't think uh, they're going to stay here for, for the whole time. Sorry, Chris, go again. I didn't, I didn't catch that. Um, so, guys, you're wondering if the baby is still alive. Yes, it's very much still alive, but it's very, very weak. You can still see its ears flicking. I and mean, those hyenas barely bit it compared to what I've seen hyenas do in the past. So it is still alive, but it is very weak. It's very sick. It was, in, there was an incredible amount of snot and, and salivating coming out of its, its, its nostrils. So uh, it could be a whole host of different diseases that, 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 that it might be suffering from. Now look at this. The hyenas are now just lying down around probably about 30 or 40 meters from this baby buffalo. And... Uh, Oh, so you see there's another one coming in in the distance. See, there's still more hyenas coming in. Oh, um, I can't wait to meet up with the the hyena the, the hyena researchers so we can find out a bit more about what's going on. Now, Cedar Point's wondering, does the herd realize that the, the, the calf is sick? Uh, they most certainly do. And uh, they, will, uh, they will realize it's sick, but they, they, they're that distinct defensive mechanism that is instinctively inbred in buffalo will, will often bring them back uh, and, and get them to try save the calf even if it is very sick. Well, as I said, the hyenas are just going to rest around here and I, I would love love to stay here but unfortunately we do need to, to move. We need to be out and out of the reserve um, in about half an hour and we are still quite far from home so I think we're going to just leave this play out. We'll definitely be back here in the morning to see if there's any update on what's happened here. And I think for now, with the herd around, it's going to be a stalemate. Wow, guys. This is why we're here. This is why we're in the Maasai Mara. I'm going to get moving. Hopefully, we still find some stuff on the way back home. We'll definitely be back here tomorrow morning to see what's going to happen next. So, while we move on, let's go back to Commander Bond. <laughs>